the whole goal of the light adjustable lens is to, to get rid of the main problem we have with cataract surgery not being refractive enough. I'm fellowship trained in refractive surgery, used to results 95 plus percent of the eyes being plus or minus a half a diopter, the cylinder being less than half a diopter, and we just don't see that with IOLs. So yes, there are formulas on the pre-op side that we're really working, regression analysis, trying to get the best formulas. We're trying to do interoperative aberrometry, but it's still not enough. We need that last step to make essentially 99% of the patients happy with the refractive result of the cataract surgery. Not just that the cataract's out and implant's in, but really ecstatic about their visual results in a, in a new life. So the concept of the light adjustable lens is to put a standard, essentially three-piece lens in the bag. It's a silicone lens, but you can adjust it. And so what we do is we implant the lens, we let everything kind of settle down as far as corneal healing, capsule contraction, and about day 14 to day 21, we start the process of refracting the patient, and then we eventually put the patient in front of a light source and apply <clears throat> a blue light in front of their face, projecting that onto the lens. And the lens has a 3D conformational shape. So if the person is hyperopic after surgery, we need the center of the lens to thicken. And there are monomers <clears throat> within the lens that when the light hits the lens, they will migrate to the center of the lens. And so we will get a 3D conformational shape. So the patient may be plus one sphere, we will adjust them over 90 seconds. They will come back the next day and they'll be plano sphere. If we need to make another adjustment because they went a little minus, we can retract it. We can make some of those monomers that are not yet uh, polymerized diffuse back out paracentrally. Check the patient the next day. They're plano sphere. Great. Now we can lock in. Then we'll put the patient back in front of the, the light adjustable device and lock in the refraction. At that point, the refraction is set. So we can treat myopia, we can treat hyperopia, and we can treat up to about two and a half diapers of astigmatism. So who are the best patients? It really boils down to a patient that has a large enough pupil. Right now we think that's about 6.5 to 7 millimeters, fully dilated. A person that literally wants to be free of glasses. So if they want to be free of glasses for distance, we can make both eyes perfect for distance. If they would like to have some intermediate near, we can set the lens power, at least right now with what we're doing in FDA studies, we could set them a little bit on the minus side which would be, you, you'd be a little bit of, of, of monovision, but as the technology gets further iterations, we already have EDOF technology that we can have extended, extended depth of focus. We can treat, again, astigmatism. We can literally put any shape on the cornea that we want. If we wanted to treat higher order aberrations, that could be done. If we wanted to increase spherical aberration, again, for reading access, you could do that. So who, say maybe who wouldn't be a good patient? Maybe somebody with corneal scarring. Um, you know, if somebody has six diopters of astigmatism, we're not there yet, that will be probably the next iteration. Um, right now, the technology is really focused on just taking cataract surgery and getting LASIK outcomes in cataract patients. That's really our goal. You want to get that lens within plus or minus two diopters of sphere, so then you can treat it. If you just put in 15 diopter lenses in everybody, now if you have to light adjust five diopters, you've lost out. So it's not that we completely go to sleep pre-op, we just want to get them close. You don't have to be as insane and as compulsive as some people are using five formulas, ten different ways of looking at keratometry, using a lens star and an Iowa master, and right before you pick the lens, you have literally 70 selections. Which one do I pick? You just have to relatively get close and then go through the light adjustment to get essentially perfection, if you will. There's a saying I use, you know, it's a Greek saying, klepata kla, not without labor. So, if you're a formula guy, you have a lot of work on the front end. If you're an intraoperative guy, you have a lot of work in surgery, you know, getting it right. And both of them are very important, don't get me wrong. We have kind of moved a little bit beyond that. You don't need a bunch of different gadgets. You just have to put the lens in and then work on the post-op. And you have a little bit of extra labor post-operatively to get the patient basically on target. And that time process from the time of implantation to day 28, that's really where we're working. We're working because we give it a chance for the patient, where exactly do you really want to be? Once we get the cataract out, they now have got clear visual access, we can start putting lenses in front of them. Is this where you want to be? And if they say, yes it is, now it's a tailor fit. It's literally going to the tailor shop and you're getting this eye this specific way. So it's a choice and a decision that the patient's involved in.